What's up folks, Spencer here with another lesson of React Native School. Today we're going to be doing some test-driven development when using async storage. It's something I've been spending a lot of time doing uh, lately over the last few weeks, so it's something I just want to share, walk through that process. So we've just got a basic app here. It's just the result of React Native init. If I go ahead and open up the terminal in here and run yarn test, you'll see that the automatic tests that Jest has, or that React Native includes via Jest, are already here. So what we'll do is actually expand on these. So when we're using async storage and when we're testing something that interacts with async storage, we need to actually mock that library. And rather than doing it all manually, I like to use this package called mock async storage. Uh, it's the one that I found works the best and has the best, most consistent API. I found other ones that just didn't work quite as well. So this is the one we're going to use. To actually use it, I'll say, I'll copy mock async storage, go over to my terminal window, I'm just going to say yarn add dash dash dev mock async storage. We want to add this as a development dependency uh, since this is something we only care about in development. And if we look back over here, you can see we need to set up files after env and it tells us uh, rooter directory and then a setup tests.js. So I'm just going to copy this part, go back over to my project and I'll close out terminal quickly. We'll go to our package.json and inside of there, you'll actually see a Jest configuration. We'll just go ahead and put that in there. With that, we wanna make sure we actually format everything correctly so our project doesn't yell at us. And now let's actually set up this setup tests.js file. Going back to mock async, uh, storage, you can see what it actually takes to set this up. So we'll just go ahead, copy that, paste it in here. And you can see I'm getting a few ESLint errors. Basically, it doesn't like my single quotes, um, but this will be fine. Actually, I'm not sure why it's yelling at us. Anyways, you can see here what we're doing here. We're importing mock async storage. We're actually creating a new instance of mock async storage. And then we're saying jest.mock at react native community slash async storage mock implementation. Uh, the reason we're doing that is whenever we import this, we actually want to use this mocked version of it versus the real thing. So that reminds me, we actually need to add this package. So I'll go ahead and say yarn add react native community async storage. And depending on your version of React Native, you may actually need to go ahead and say React Native link, React Native Community Async Storage. So with that complete, let's go ahead and start implementing our uh, project. So what I'm gonna, going to say is uh, create a new file called recent search.js. And we're going to have two functions. We're going to have save recent search. I'll just go ahead export const save recent search. We're also going to have get recent search. We're also going to need to import async storage from at react native community slash async storage. And we've got that function. Let's go ahead and set up our test file as well. So I'll just go ahead and create a new file in here. I'm going to say recent search.test.js. If you use .test.js, Jest will automatically pick those tests up for you. From here, I'll import the get recent search and save recent search from dot forward slash recent search. And then the way I like to do this is I'm going to describe each function. So get recent search. It's going to be a test block and then describe save recent search will be another test block. I just went ahead and disabled the ESLint there to save a few errors. So something else we're going to want to do is import async storage from at react native community async storage. And since we're going to be working with this and interacting with it, something you always want to do whenever you're working with a mock library is basically clear everything up. This goes for really any test is each test should be its own unique test bed. So with that, since we're working with async storage, what I'm going to say is before each, 
It's going to take a callback function. In there, I'm going to say async storage dot clear. So that basically means delete everything from async storage. And this is an asynchronous action. So what we'll want to do is actually use async and await. Oops. So I'm just going to put in front of this async storage dot clear and await so that it waits for everything to clear before it goes ahead and runs each one of these tests. Let's just go ahead and make sure, whoops, this is right. So we'll test uh, it works. And we'll just expect true dot to be truthy. Let's run this test to make sure our test is being picked up. So I'll say yarn run or just yarn test. All right, it's picking up our test. It passed. Both of our tests passed. That one took a while longer. Um, since we're not actually using this test, I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. But what we'll do now is actually just let's move recent test into that test directory just so it kind of fits there. That means we actually need to make sure we update the import path dot dot forward slash recent search so it goes out of the directory and grabs the right file. And then I'll go ahead and delete this test so it speeds things up. The app dash test.js. Now we can go ahead and run this again. And that works for us. So what I'm going to do is actually add yarn test dash 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 watch. So it just keeps rerunning our test as we change our files. Okay, we're actually going to use dash dash watch all because we don't have Git enabled. And we'll open that up whenever we run our tests. Okay, looking at get recent search, what are things it's going to do? First, if no results exist at key, return an empty array. Otherwise, another test is it returns an array of recent searches. And that's all our get recent search is going to do. So let's write test for that. Just go ahead, copy this. So we can say test. I'm going to use async await in here because our get recent search is going to be an asynchronous function, or it's going to return promises. So we can use async await. So what I can say is const result is going to equal await get recent search. Okay. And then we're going to expect result dot to be, actually, I think it's going to be to equal an empty array. Alternatively, we could just say expect result dot length dot to be one. But I want to do to equal to make sure it is an array. Next, let's go ahead and set up our returns an array. So we'll say test returns an array recent searches. Put our async up here. And I can say const result is equal well to the same thing up here. This time, though, let's just say it's going to be an ID of one. So it's going to return an array with this in it. Now to make that actually happen, we need to go ahead and say await async storage dot set item at whatever key get recent search is going to be. So I'm going to set the key as demo recent search. Okay, so now if we look at this test result, you'll see we've got one test failed. Actually, we've got two tests failed, which is what we expect because our function does nothing. So first off, looking at get recent search, well, we can say, let's just go ahead and so get recent search. We've already imported our async storage. Let's go grab our key. So we've got demo recent search. We'll use async and await in here again. We can say const result is equal to async storage dot get item demo recent search. We can say if result, we'll go ahead and return json.parse result. If not, we'll just go ahead and return an empty array. And if you're using async and await, well, first we need to make sure we await the response from async storage. You also want to wrap things in a try and a catch. So what we're going to say is try catch. 
this is our positive outcome. And if something goes wrong, we're just going to return an empty array. So let's run our test. Looks like this is expecting. Okay, so if I fix my syntax error, we can see if no result exists at key, return an empty array. That's good. But we can see our second test returns an array of recent searches. We can see that we've got, we expect an array of objects with an ID of one, but we get an, an empty array. So let's go look at the implementation. We can see we're going to, well, we see we've got a typo here. So async storage.get item. Save it. Okay, so even with that typo, we still have an error. Or with the typo fixed, we still have an error. So let's go over here and we can see async storage.set item. I'm not actually setting any items. So I'll go ahead and put json.stringify the array with ID of one. And we can see here our tests now successfully run. So that's our get recent search. It's pretty basic. Uh, what about the save recent search? Well, what do we want to happen here? We're going to say it adds the latest search to the start of the array. That's one test. It's going to add an item to, we'll say if no recent search exists, adds item, limits the result of recent search to three. And then finally, it's going to accept optional second argument to clear all response, clear all recent searches. How about that? Okay, we're only gonna do a few of these and then I'm gonna leave the rest for you. So what we'll do, we'll do this if no recent search and we'll also do this adds the latest search to the start of the array and you can do these next too. So let's go ahead and add these in. So it will say test. Again, we're going to be using async and await. Okay, so we've already imported our save recent search. We've got async in here. So what I'll say is save recent search. If no recent search exists, it adds an item. So we'll go, go ahead and just set this up as an ID of one. So I'll await that. And then we can go ahead and say, we'll just go ahead and get recent search because we've already tested that. We're confident that'll work and not break our tests. So I'll just go ahead and say const result. So we expect this to give us this response. Likewise, let's just go ahead and copy this over. We'll do an await save recent search with an ID of one and two, and we want the most recent search to be at the top of the array or at the position of zero. So we expect it to equal an array with an ID of two and an ID of one in that order. If I save this and run our tests, we'll see both of those fail. So if we go to our save recent search, we'll wrap this in a try and a catch. In this case, again, we'll just return an empty array. If there is some, or we're just going to return if there is some error. We don't really care about errors in this case. It is something to add in later on if you so wish. So we'll use async await up here. So if no recent search exists, adds an item. So let's just say that we're going to return async storage dot set item at our demo recent search. Okay, we need to make sure we stringify this and we know we're going to take the actual recent search and stringify that, which it needs to be an array. We'll save this. And we see we got, if no recent search exists, adds an item. So it does that successfully. However, our second test is failing because it's just showing us a, an array with the ID of two because we're not actually adding to it. We're just going ahead and replacing it. So what we'll want to do here is actually say const recent search is equal to await get recent search. 
And then we can say const new recent search is going to equal an empty array. We're going to copy over the existing recent search. And then we need to add, actually this needs to be, instead of recent search, we'll call this existing search. So we're making a shallow copy of the existing search and copying it into a new array. And since we know recent search needs to go at the front of that array, we can go ahead and copy recent search to that front and then copy over the rest of the array. Now for new recent search, we can just go ahead and swap that down here. And we know that with get recent search because of the test we wrote previously is either going to return the recent results, an array of the recent results or an empty array. So we don't need to do any checks to make sure that existing search is already an array. So if I save this and run it, you can see all of our tests are now passing. So that was just a quick rundown on running some, writing some tests, uh, test driven development for async storage related testing. Uh, you need to make sure you actually import a mock library or mock the library yourself. It's going to be true for any third party package that you interact with in uh, any of your functions in your tests. You want to make sure you actually clear that out so you have a clear test bed. I like to set up a describe block for each one of my functions and put my test cases for that function inside of the describe block. And that's pretty much it. I, I definitely encourage you to uh, write tests for these next two test cases. Add some additional test cases to handle errors as well, uh, just to get more comfortable with it. I struggled a really long time, still kind of struggle with testing. Uh, but what I found is get some examples in and then get some repetitions of actually writing tests for yourself. So I hope you found some value in this and I'll see you in the next lesson.